What's up, it's your favorite NPHP, and welcome back to my channel. As promised, I was going to further discuss some study techniques that helped me get through grad school. Some of you all are currently in school, um, about to start school, or looking to start graduate school. At the same time, I know some of you guys still have to work full time. You guys have amazing, beautiful families of your own. So here are five amazing study techniques that helped me get through grad school with passing grades. So the first technique I used was I will study a little at a time until my test. And this technique is actually called space repetition. At that time, eight years ago when I was in grad school, I did not know what these were evidence-based techniques. I know that it takes me longer to retain information. So as soon as I receive material that day in school, I will start studying that day. Spaced repetition, and implies that memory improves when learning material is spaced out over time rather than done together. Psychologist Herman Ebbinghaus, he created what is called the forgetting curve. It's basically after forming a memory, we gradually forget more and more of it as time elapses, right? Studying for eight hours over two weeks will generally result in superior performance compared to studying for eight hours in one sitting in like basically AKA cramming. I utilized this as soon as I got my information that night I was studying. You plan short frequent review study sessions. The day you receive the information until your test, you're studying throughout that whole period, right? So every day you will review new material, but you will always go back and review the old material, always. So as time goes on, as your test starts to approach, yes, you are still going over the old material, but the old material is now like it's memorized. It's, in, it's embedded in your memory because you slowly been doing it for so long that you memorize it. So it's not going to take you as long, although it might sound like it's, it's going to take you as long. It's like you skim through it because you already know the older material. And what you're trying to now remember is that short new material um, right before the test. It's an amazing technique. I did utilize it um, with all my tests because I'm a person that it takes me a long time to retain anyway. So this was the only way that I could do it to get good grades. So the second technique that I used was actually utilizing note cards and I would usually utilize them with like the terminology. So like farm with the medication, medical terms, some of path though. This method is actually called active recall. You write the terminology on one side of the card, the back of the card, you're writing the definition and active recall is basically Basically, after you memorize the definition, you, you should be able to recall the information without looking at the card. You don't always have to use note cards. You can actually rewrite your notes. That's something I also did do. I did rewrite my notes because it was hard for me to study me looking at the PowerPoint presentation. It was just something about studying the material, looking at my own handwriting for some reason. I did it in undergrad and I did it in graduate school. Not for everything, because you know some of the chapters could be very, very long, but I did do it most of the time. It was rewrite my notes. But um, yeah, so the active recall is basically like over time, you should be able to recall the information without looking at the your notes or without looking at the other side of the note card. And one thing about note cards, they could travel with you anywhere and it's small and discreet. So when you're at work, you could pull it out. If you're waiting for anything, waiting in line at Starbucks, waiting in traffic, the note cards is just handy and they could go with you anywhere. The third technique that I used was actually taking on like a teacher role. So I will actually teach my son the material. I'll break down the information into my, like a more layman's term or for him to understand, although he wasn't listening to me. He was four or five years old during that time. And also with his father, I was just teaching. I, you know, they're not paying attention to me, but it was the point of being in a teacher role and teaching somebody the material. This technique is actually called the Feynman's technique. So the main idea behind this technique is to take something that's hard to understand and to try to clarify it in your mind by explaining it um, as if you're talking to a child. So that's exactly what I did. And like I said, I didn't know these were like evidence-based techniques at that time. So no wonder why I felt school was easy because I was just studying properly. This has four steps. The four steps is basically you choose your subject or what you're studying, right? And then you pretend to explain the information to your child and reflect on the gaps or reflect on your understanding. And then you go back to step two, where you pretend to explain the knowledge to your child or to a child. Again, you're just simplifying this information, breaking it down into layman's term, and it just helps you understand it better. You're not trying to memorize like a complex system of complex, although healthcare is very complex, but you're not trying to understand how it was taught to you in a complex way. You're breaking it down for yourself to understand way easier than how it's presented to us. So the fourth technique I use was using highlighters and it's straightforward. Warm colors such as red and yellow help with a positive motivating learning environment. While I was in school, I didn't, you know, go based on the colors, but I just kept it the same. So like the key terms may have been green one day. I did use the yellow for the information 
and but the key term I just kept it consistent and I didn't highlight everything I just highlighted the key terms I didn't highlight the conjoining words like the and the 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 is I didn't highlight those I did teach my son this method and when I tell you I thought he had it until he came home he asked me to help him study one day and he gave me his paper and I seen the whole page was highlighted I mean everywhere different colors it was just just everywhere and I was like oh no 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 this this you try not to highlight everything <laughs> you know it's just it, it was just it was very overwhelming I actually had him ask his teacher for another paper last but not least is number five and it's actually studying before bed so one day I was getting nervous because the test was approaching I started to push some of my um, newer information before bedtime I don't know it just happened that way right or it was obviously it was the Lord it was all it was all the Lord um, telling me to study before bed and when I tell you it was amazing and I noticed I could remember waking up I'm like wait it took me a shorter time to memorize this information and I linked it to studying before bed so there's different studies out there that does show studying before you go to sleep consolidate the information and it improves your recall and when I tell you it does and this is actually what I tell my son and he noticed it too like it's not cramming it's just the like you know how um, with the space repetition we're studying 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 and now that night before the test you have a little bit of newer information that you feel like you don't know the best it's like it's not really it's memorized just yet I will try to study the newer material before I go to bed and yes I wake up in the morning and I'm able to recall that information as if I've been studying for several days and it's like no I've only studied the last two nights and it's just amazing how it works so yes those are the top five ways techniques methods that helped me study through graduate school while working full time, while having a family and, you know, juggling multiple classes. We don't just take one class. I guess if you're full time, you don't just take one class. So it's like I use all these techniques with all my classes, bouncing it out. You know, as soon as I got my syllabus, I, you know, we always have that big book, <laughs> that big planner. My planner was filled on what days I was studying with subject. And I heard that's actually another technique is switching off. Don't just study like all of advanced patho one day. Study advanced patho, study advanced pharmacology, study your ethics. Those are five amazing ways that helped me study in graduate school. It's kind of weird that I felt like graduate school was easy, but it wasn't easy. I just had some nice study techniques that I utilized. And now today I'm finding that they're actually evidence-based ways of studying that is proven for you to retain and recall um, the information, especially when you're studying large chapters and, you know, a large amount of information. So you guys know what time it is. It's Bible verse time. And today's Bible verse is 1 John chapter 4, verse 11. It says, Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. I love you guys. I love you guys. You know, I want to love you guys just the way God loves me. And, you know, we have to love everyone, even someone who did you wrong in the past. Love them the best way that you can because, you know, there's only blessings that's going to come your way after. Just loving them the way God loves you. It's just the best way and the only way to love, honestly. And, you know, I just love to put a smile on people's face and I just love to help. That's one thing. I, I am a helpful person. I love to help. So please give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't, subscribe, subscribe, turn the bell notification on. Until next time.